Hello, everyone. We are live at five. It's Friday. It's Friday. TJF. March 30th. And I'm Paul Wontorek. And I'm Ryan Lee Gilbert. And we are joined by content producer Matt Rhoda. It's a good Friday. It's a good, it's a good Friday. Friday. And a Passover. And, and Passover. There's a lot of things today. And we have a wonderful guest here with us this evening. Mr. Eric Peterson. Yes. Of Escape to Margaritaville in an amazing blazer. <laughs> he, he looks but you're not going to see fresh. it yet because we are going to talk about today's top five first. All right, so we found out today that Desperate Measures is moving to New World Stages, Ryan. Yeah, so this was at the York Theater Company earlier. Um, Lauren Molina. It was extended like nine times. It was times. extended so many times. It was there I, forever. I feel like we led, kept reporting it. Was we, <laughs> exactly. Lauren Molina led it. And now it's headed to New World Stages, where you can see Jersey Boys and Avenue Q. This is go. It'll move. Oh, beginning. I like how you promoted the other well, you know, tenants of New, 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 New World Stages. stages. Yeah, I love on. what they do. <laughs> It'll begin there on May 30th uh, and open on June 13th. This has music by David Friedman, books and lyrics by Peter Kellogg and Bill Castellino. It's based on Shakespeare's Measure for Measure, and it's a Western-inspired musical. Um, and casting will be announced at a later date, but I do have the description here, and I wanted to read it to you because I think it's amazing. Johnny Blood, who is a handsome young man whose life is in danger over a saloon brawl, gets cast up with these with this group of colorful characters set in the early 1890s, and it includes a wily sheriff, an eccentric priest, an authoritarian governor, a saloon girl gone good, and a nun out of habit as they all struggle to protect Johnny. Look at that. Okay, I'm in. I'm sure right? we'll have one of them on Live at Five. Yeah, You know absolutely. what I mean? I feel like yeah. that'll happen at I'm some point. I'm sold already. Uh, Cherry Jones is joining a new Netflix movie, Paul. Was it a movie or a series? It's a Netflix movie. It's a movie. movie. Okay. Cherry Jones, we love her. Love her. Tony Wenner, Cherry Jones. Yes. Um, wasn't she great on I, um, Oh, on Transparent. You knew what oh, I was talking I about. I love, that's yes. what I love about Ryan. He knew immediately what I was talking about. <laughs> she was about. so good. Uh, yes. She will be in Wine Country. Uh, it's a new comedy written by Emily Spivy and Liz Kakowski. Mm -hmm. It follows longtime friends who head to Napa for the weekend to celebrate a 50th birthday. And I guess a lot of wine gets consumed. I would hope so. Production yeah. is already underway in LA and they will also film in Napa. Yeah. And here's the really cool part about this. This upcoming Netflix movie is produced by none other than Amy Poehler. And it's her directorial debut. What? Which is super amazing. And it's her directorial yeah. debut. And Tina Fey is in it. There's Rachel Dratch, this amazing cast. Um, it reminds you of You know more than I do. I mean, I just, I'm, <laughs> I live by Netflix. When can so. I watch it? Okay, by the way, I'm about to go to Chicago and I just downloaded season two of Lemony Snicket. You, oh, that's right. That started today. It started today, oh, you guys. Neil goodness. Patrick Harris. Oh. Anyway, that's what I'll be watching on the plane. Uh, my Fair Lady had a visit from a familiar face last night, Ryan. This is one of the most adorable things I've seen in so the long. The most? It, one of the most. Yeah, I mean, just right. Aaron Tveit went to go see My Fair Lady, where his... What's the connection there? Well, he, you know, he was in this musical called Catch Me If You Can with Norbert Leo Butts. How incredible was Catch Me If You Can? I think oh, about Catch uh, Me If yeah, You Can I like that all show the time. I love and they, they, took, were, they were nominated for Favorite On Stage Pair, by the of way. Course, the of course. Of course they were. They were incredible. And they took this adorable photo where Norbert is just clutching Aaron and it's super cute and obviously Norbert is playing Alfred P. Doolittle in Mer My Fair Lady which is opening soon. I don't know. A couple but, weeks. Yeah, a couple Can weeks. we talk about the buzz already about Norbert though? I mean I every mean, time Norbert's course, in a show there's major there's buzz. buzz about Norbert. Yeah, yeah so like, the buzz is buzzing. Yeah, hilarious. Can't wait. Um, we got some music today from the upcoming Jesus Christ Superstar live, Paul. Do you guys like Gethsemane? <laughs> Love that song. I do. That's I love that beautiful song. song. <laughs> that is that amazing Jesus Christ Superstar song that I didn't know how to properly pronounce until Eric Peterson taught me. Get so I said it right away yeah. so that I wouldn't and it forget just during the it. news story. Okay. <laughs> they released three tracks. Jesus Christ Superstar Live is happening Sunday, Easter, Easter Sunday. Sunday. This That's this Sunday for you atheists. Um, <laughs> uh, I mean, there might be some. Um, on Sunday, on Spotify, you can listen to Gethsemane. Yep. Nailed it. Uh, the Overture. <laughs> And cool. Superstar, yeah. which is another fun song. Awesome. Uh, anyway, yeah, go check it out and then watch it. Yeah. Watch it. It's going to be amazing. It's so good. 8 p.m. on NBC. Um, and last but not least, save the date, Ryan. Yeah, What's going so, on? So April is a big month, as we all know, because the cutoff date for the Tony Award eligibility is April 26th this year. And so we're telling you all of the things that you can look forward to April. My pick is Catherine McPhee, Cat McPhee, if you know her intimately, you know, or friendly, that I do not intimately, my God. Um, <laughs> she goes, to, she starts in, in Waitress on April 10th, and I'm very excited about that. So that was my pick. And yours? You want to know my pick? 
Yeah. They can read it on the site. <laughs> Carousel, my of favorite course. musical. It's back on the boards. Really yeah. curious to see uh, what they've yeah. done to it. And there's a cute little video to go along with our Save the Dates. Now yeah, for the first time, there's a video. Mm -hmm. You can watch you can us all. On Instagram, Facebook, and the article. Good stuff. But yeah, that's it. That's the Friday. That's the Friday top five. No, you're off to part two of Angels in America tonight. I am oh seeing part two of Angels God. in America tonight. Okay, that's the longer I, one. I, it's yes. four hours. Oof. I know, but the part one flew by. It like, could. I'm oh, no, still it does. Buzzing. The whole thing flies buzzing by. Buzzing from yeah. last night. Yeah, well, you I have fun. Wait. Thank you bring so your much. Tish, you, bring your tissues. I'm going to Pretty Woman. Yeah, you're going to Pretty Woman in Chicago. I'm well, have fun. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you uh, so hey, Matt, much. why don't you tell us about Mr. Peterson? I would love to. Eric Peterson was born in the Chicago suburb of Hoffman Estates, Illinois, which we'll talk about in a second because I'm from Illinois, too, which I didn't realize that we were. Yeah, okay, anyway. He's appeared. Yeah, that's true. Uh, he's appeared on Broadway in Shrek the Musical, Peter and the Starcatcher, and School of Rocket on television in The Big Bang Theory, Christie, and The Brittany Murphy Story, just to name a few. He's currently starring opposite Lisa Howard in Escape to Margaritaville on Broadway, where he's eating cheeseburgers in paradise eight times a week. And that is what he is here to talk about today. If you have questions for Eric, and I know that you do, leave them in the comments section below, and we will get to as many as we possibly can. Really, we want all your questions. Everything, anything you're curious about, about anything, anything in general, um, Eric will answer it. Even life questions, sure. he, he'll answer. Even personal uh, things. Even sure. personal things. Very personal. And now, here is Paul and Eric. Hello, sir. Hello, how are how you? How you doing? I'm great. Always love the Eric Peterson fashion show. <sighs> I try. It's always a fashion show. When did I you try. start dressing so snazzy? Uh, I think I didn't always dress snazzy, but I always wanted to look um, different than everybody else. Okay. You know, since I was a kid, I, I look back at pictures of myself when I was a kid, and I had terrible fashion sense, but I w always wanted that really bright weird outfit so you're always wearing like weird stuff yeah yeah you're not wearing and anything the, and weird the, today but no you're, i think I, i'm i as i've grown older i've learned how to uh so you've, how got to do yeah, you've got layers you know. you've got a, a pineapple pen sure, you've got yeah. i mean it's it's good i'm actually i i should talk about this i it's not up yet but i've been working on a blog called the portly wow. and it's going to be you like bought a, that url That's i did URL. i have it i have it um, It'd be awful if you hadn't bought it. I know, right? Now, now it. it's gone. Um, I can't believe that you are all like wasn't bought yet too. Like, yeah, that's not, that seems yeah, like a common. The portly gentleman. And so yeah. I want to do like a blog that's sort of like fashion life advice for guys that aren't like model skinny uh -huh. but still want to dress cool. Yeah. So I feel like so much of the fashion world is kind of geared towards like super like skinny guys, yeah, but most guys like want to are not looking like that and right. actually want to dress cool. So I'm into that. Yeah. Portland's a cool word too. It is. That's like, you know where I got it from the movie, um, orange County, yeah. uh, the one with, uh, Jack Black and yep. stuff. There was a point where Ben Stiller has a little cameo as a, a fire, uh, like a, a fireman uh -huh. and Jack Black's running away. And he's like, uh, we have a suspect. He's about a uh, six, one, Portly. <laughs> it's a good movie quote if you're a fan of Orange County. It's a great word. I like it yeah, a lot. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm going to look for that. Please do. And I hope you keep up with that. Yeah, I will. I will. Make that. I will. Uh, Escape to Margaritaville. Yeah. This is a super fun show. Yeah. Uh, I know we've been talking about the show a lot. We had um, Lisa Howard here. Yeah, I saw that. Last week, I believe. Yeah. Um, she is your onstage love interest. She's Spoiler. amazing. Amazing. She's fantastic. She's so good. Did you guys know each other before you did this show? Uh, no, but Lisa and I did uh, from the very first reading in December of 2015. We both were the first two to play those roles. Wow. So we met doing that and then became, we instantly hit it off. Um, and then we did all of the readings and labs and workshops. And then I wasn't able to do the La Jolla production because I was doing School of Rock right uh, here. That, was that big smash um, hit. Yeah. And yep. then uh, when it came back to Broadway, I was happy to jump back in. So cool. Yeah, and she's amazing. I know that she said when she got that very first reading, she didn't really know this music. Yes. I didn't know this music before I walked into yeah. the theater to see this highly entertaining show. <laughs> uh, what about you? I knew every song. Okay. I, I was a. Uh, I was actually one of the few people f uh, from the beginning who I grew up a parrot head. Okay. My uh, my parents uh, had a boat, and so we would go to our boat every weekend. Um, and my grandfather had a boat, and like I grew up in sort of a nautical family and culture. And on boats, all you do is listen to Jimmy Buffett. Okay. It's like the truth. Like I grew up listening to Jimmy Buffett and Bob Marley okay. almost exclusively. Um, so, and I went to probably six or seven Buffett concerts when I was a kid and my family, we would tailgate and like rent a bus and go up there early and do the whole thing. So when I heard that they were going to be doing, I remember I saw like the, a post saying that, you know, they're going to do a, yeah. a Margaritaville musical 
And I called my agents. I was like, you got to get me in for that. Like that I would be perfect for that. Wow. And they did. And, and I, worked. and I was in it from the beginning and yeah, it's been awesome. I bet you also know Yacht Rock really well. Oh yeah. Matt, Matt Roden and I yeah. love Yacht Rock. I love <laughs> Yacht Rock. It's a cool thing. Pono's, it's a great genre. <laughs> the Eagles. It is. Yeah. It's a great genre. Um, Christopher it. Cross. Yeah. We love you. Mm. Um, so when, what was your first meeting with Jimmy Buffett like? Because I'm sure that meant a lot more to you than it did to some of your fellow cast members. Yeah, it did. Um, I met him at the first reading, um, and it was uh, it was so cool. He's he's great in that his energy. He's one of those stars that like when he enters a room, you feel it. There's an aura mm-hmm. around him, and he also brings such joy to every room that he's in. So meeting him was really cool. I would say one of the maybe cooler parts was the second reading that we did. Um, so after we did the, the first, you know, it was like a week long reading, yeah. the first n- day of rehearsal, my dad called me and my dad's like a Chicago guy. He doesn't really, you know, talk about his emotions very much and just kind of like, you know, mm-hmm. anything I'm in, he's like, hey, it, was, it was good. It was good. You know? Um, and after the first day of rehearsal, my dad called me and he was like a schoolboy. He was like, so oh, like, uh, what, what songs did you get to sing? And I was like, and I told him like the songs that I do. And he was like, and, and was, was Jimmy there? Was he? And I was like, yeah, he was there and he was cool. And, and one of the things was, uh, I sing Ragtop Day in the show, which is about driving around in, in a convertible. And I told my dad, I was like, I listed, you know, I was like, oh, one of them I do is Ragtop Day. And my dad got kind of emotional and he was like, He's like, you know, Eric, I don't know if you remember this, but when you were like ah, five, six years old, I used to drive around with you and me in my convertible and we would sing Ragtop Day together. And I was like, that's "That's so so cool, Dad. And then I told Jimmy that story at the second reading. And Jimmy got emotional when I was telling him that. And then he was like, you tell your dad, you know, thanks for for being a fan. And I told my dad that Jimmy had said that. My dad was like, oh, Jimmy, Jimmy Buffett, talk to me. <laughs> and like, you know, he, he couldn't even believe it. So, and then really cool, when we did the sh- the tour of Margaritaville in Chicago, yeah. uh, Jimmy met my dad. And what? They filmed it and stuff. And oh my God, it, was, it happened. It was really cool. Yeah, it was That's great, amazing. Great moment, yeah. So you play Brick. That's his, I do. That's this guy's name. Yeah. Uh, and t- tell me about Brick. What's he going through? Brick is uh, the bartender at the Margaritaville Hotel mm-hmm. and uh, Resort. And he is uh, not the brightest bulb mm-hmm. in the shed, um, and, but he's very lovable and very loyal to Tully Mars, who's played by Paul Alexander Nolan. Um, and we sort of, uh, most weeks, uh, females come to the island, we have yeah. a good time, and then we say, ta-ta, see you yeah. later. Um, and then in the sh- in the the version of the show, we meet uh, two ladies who make our hearts two flutter a bit show more. Up that change, yeah, everything. yeah. So Brick is just so he's the the comic relief of the show, and, yeah. and uh, a good, lovable guy. Is that you? What's your type? So yeah. let's see. You played. I mean, you were School of Rock. Uh-huh. You did School of Rock for I a did. long time. Yeah, for about a year. Yeah, yeah. you were Alex Brightman. You were the first yeah. replacement yeah. after Alex yeah. Brightman. Yeah. Um, and then you did Shrek. I did right? Shrek, yeah. On the road. Yeah, and I, I was the standby for Shrek on Broadway yeah. uh, and understudied it, and then I played it on the road yeah, right. for a year. So what is the Eric Peterson type? Uh, I'd like to think that uh, I play lovable guys uh, who are. I, I always like to think of, um, <clears throat> I always thought that Shrek was the one of my favorite characters because he was not your typical leading man, because I love to play a, a leading yeah. man role, but that doesn't look like the square jawed, like, I am a leading man, right. you know, like he's more the, 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 the lovable guy next door, the you know, but still, hero. yeah, the unlikely hero. Um, so I would, I'd hope to say that that's my type, uh-huh. I think. Well, yeah. you know what? You're lucky because there's always those guys are always on Broadway. We love those guys. I think so. Yeah, we love them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hey, Mr. Matt Roden. Hey, what? Uh, are there any questions out there? Um. Yeah. George wants to know, what was your favorite part about growing up outside Chicago? And I'm also curious to know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, my favorite. I I loved. I grew up. I was born in Hoffman Estates, but I I grew up in Carroll Stream, Illinois, which is uh, the West Suburbs. It's about half an hour, forty minutes directly west of the Loop. Um, and I think it was the greatest place in the world to grow up. If I could live in Chicago and raise my family there, I would do it just with what I do. I sort of have to be in New York or LA. Um, but I just love the people of Chicago. I love the food of Chicago. I love the sports teams of Chicago. I love the, 
uh, the attitude of people from the Midwest who just like look you in the eye and have a smile on their face. And, you know, it, it was funny when we were on the tour of this Margaritaville yeah. thing, we were in Chicago for a month, which was just amazing. And I just within like an hour of being in Chicago, just the the fact that when people walk down the street in Chicago, there's just like a a, a resting smile on uh -huh. their face, you know? A resting smile face. Yes, <laughs> and, and, and we don't necessarily we get, don't get that, that in, in New, New York. York. No. And so it was very refreshing <laughs> to see that when yeah. I was home. Yeah, but I, I loved everything about growing up uh, in the West Do Suburbs. Do you have any food recommendations for me? Because I'm going to Chicago Absolutely. this weekend. Absolutely. Oh, okay. okay. Giordano's, Giordano's is Giordano's. great. Um, all right, have you ever been to Portillo's? I don't think so. Okay. Oh my. You need to get a pen oh and write, God. or we'll write it down after. Okay. Portillo's is a restaurant that uh, was started uh, by this guy named Frank Portillo. Uh, Catchy in, name. If yes. I'm, yeah. And he started as a little tiny uh, hot dog truck in Villa Park, which okay. is the suburb of Chicago. And it grew and grew. And now there's like, there's probably like 25 of them around the city. Right. There's like three or four in the city and then in the suburbs. And now they have one in uh, Florida. They have one in uh, Buena Park uh, outside of LA. Uh -huh. So it's starting to grow. But they're, they're the greatest hot dogs you will ever taste. And ever. then you got to get Italian beef. I get the uh, beef and cheddar croissant, which is a uh, croissant. And then you put... Uh, Italian beef in it, and uh -huh. then it's got jardiner and spicy peppers on it and okay. sweet peppers, and then there's melted cheddar cheese in the bottom. Wow. Like, the grease will break the bag okay. if you leave it for more than five minutes. Okay. But that's that's where you first want to go. Okay. And those fries. Oh, the and fries those are so fries. good. <laughs> Do you like chocolate cake? They have a I chocolate mean, cake I, shake that's like a milkshake that tastes like you put chocolate cake in your mouth. It's wow. amazing. Okay. There's also a restaurant called somewhere Garibaldi's. Too? What about the pizza thing? You know, thing? pizza, I would say, um, I like Lou Malnati's is my favorite. Okay. Uh, I'm a Giordano. All right, good. Guy. Yeah. Good. Did you go see a lot of theater? Were you, did you see a lot of theater? I in did. Chicago? I did. My parents. Uh, we saw a lot. I remember I saw like producers before it ever came to Broadway. Oh yeah, the pre-Broadway run. Yeah, was there. Um, and then we used to go to. And you love Nathan Lane too. I love Nathan Lane. Yeah. Have you met him? I've never met him. Okay. I, you know, on, on Broadway, we always uh, when there's a new opening night of a show, we all write. Uh, on a little sheet of paper, like happy opening from the cast of Margaritaville to the you know whatever show is opening next. And when Angels in America was opening, I just wrote Nathan Lane, you are my hero. I love you so much, Eric Peterson. Aww. And maybe someday he'll see it. Oh, how and sweet! He'll, and he'll check be out the ball, Nathan. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Laura wants to know what was your favorite thing about playing Shrek. My favorite thing about playing Shrek, um, sitting in the makeup chair. For yeah, hours. it was it, you know it was two hours of makeup before the show and an hour after. Um, What's the hour after? Just taking off it's the pieces. It's the taking off the pieces, and then they they try to take care of your skin. They do it very slowly, and they do these like you know like lavender. Did you have skin issues though during the run? No, no, okay. no I did pretty good. Yeah. Um, and I got to a point where I could fall asleep while they would put the makeup on me. They didn't they didn't love that, but I also like my daughter was born on that tour, and so. I was like a new dad and like so tired wow. and everything. So I would sleep in the makeup chair and I would wake up and I'd be Shrek. And it was <laughs> it was a slightly <laughs> odd sensation. That's crazy. Um, but I loved playing Shrek. I mean, I loved that show. I loved the music. I loved everybody in the cast. I really actually enjoyed the costume and the makeup because it was so transformative. And I loved to just kind of like saunter around backstage and give people hugs because it was so huge. <laughs> Um, I have a good story about Shrek. This was um, one of my favorite moments of my whole life. We were uh, doing uh, the run at the Pantages, so they were doing some press things, and we went out to Downey, which is like, there's this huge outlet mall in Downey, which is like outside of LA. And they had a meet and greet thing where I was like in costume and oh makeup and like wow. for like an hour and a half, just like meeting kids at a mall. They didn't do that a lot, but this was like a big market. So they were trying to get the, the word out. And so I met all these kids and, and it was fun. And, and I took a picture with everybody. And near the end of the, the line, there was this girl. She was probably about like seven or eight years old. And she was like, hi, Shrek. And I was like, hello, how are you? <laughs> and she was like, and she was like, I know you're not really Shrek. I know you're just an actor playing Shrek. And I was like, no, I'm not. I'm Shrek. What are you talking about? Because the, also the makeup was so good. I mean, yeah. it really was like movie quality voice? makeup. That was it, the, okay. it was, yeah. Okay. Um, and and so I was like, no, I'm Shrek. Look, you can touch my nose and my ears. And, and so she kind of like started like poking at my face. And it was like that moment in Hook when he's like, there you are, Peter. Right? <laughs> and, and she like touched my face. And I saw this like thing just wash over her. And she was like, oh, 
And she gave me this oh, huge hug wow. and she said, I knew it was you. And then she was like, how's Donkey? And I was like, oh, he's great. He's doing great. He's oh. eating waffles. And, and, she, and we had this like little moment where she like got just so excited that she like was a kid again. And wow. she was only like seven or eight. So it's not like she was super jaded. And she had a good attitude, but it was, it was one of the coolest coolest moments of doing that's track. amazing yeah it's good you're a good liar yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's why i'm an actor yeah that's right <laughs> um laura wants to know do you have a, do you have a favorite song quote from jimmy buffett favorite song quote favorite oh, lyric that's good um i love all of the lyrics in son of a sailor i love pirate looks at 40 um just i mean the sort of the main line of pirate looks at 40 of you know uh Oh, it's not coming to me now, but the you know just the fact that he's his job is not existent anymore. But what he really would love to be is like marauding across the oceans, mm -hmm. but it just isn't around anymore. Yeah. Is your dad loving that original cast recording? Yes, he is. He yeah. be. He's been listening to it quite a <laughs> bit. Yeah. Um, Caitlin uh, wants to know, and this story you, you just told a little bit of a story, but I'm sure you have more. Have you ha ever had any weird fan interactions at the stage door? Um. Everybody's been pretty great with me. I, I love when somebody like clearly has like been following you on social media or something and and knows something that you're into. I had a guy when I was doing School of Rock. I I love these little uh, happy colas. Mm. I, I eat them like during the show. They're like little gummy yeah. bears that taste like Coca-Cola. And I just love those. And I had said it in some video. I think it was for a Broadway.com video. Yeah. And then he like met me at the stage door with like two bags of them. And I was like, oh. Sweet, thanks. That's that's very <laughs> kind of you. So you I do, in fact, love those. You would still accept those. I would still accept okay. those. Yes. Good yes. To know. yes. Um, and last but not least, Barbara wants to know. She said she saw the show twice in Nola. Fantastic. How did you like the town and the food? Did you have Did you have a favorite restaurant? Yes, I did. I did. Oh my gosh, I went to a place. Uh, uh, it was called Cochon, Cochon, which Cochon. I think means pig. It means pig in wow. French. Okay. Cochon. Uh, it was. So good. I had like deep fried alligator bites and beef brisket that was like, it was with cold mashed potatoes, but really hot uh, beef brisket. And so they're like the two mixed together. Cochon was spectacular. And New Orleans was great. I'd been in New Orleans a few times before. Uh, I shot a Popeye's commercial there and I had done a <laughs> theater works tour through New yes! Orleans. Yes. So I, I was very familiar with the city and it was great to like go out and hear the music. And I love New Orleans. It's great. Yeah. Awesome. Well, we're running out of time. Uh, thank you so much for being. How can people yeah. find you on social media? Uh, you can find me on Instagram. I'm at Eric Pete, E R I C P E T E, or on uh, Twitter. I'm Eric Peterson44. That's Peterson S E N, not Eric Peterson. Yeah. 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 Uh, thank you so much for being Thanks. here. Thanks. Oh, I, can I, I tell something real quick? Yeah. Um, if you want to come check me out, I'm doing. Oh, I'm uh, sorry. It's all right. It's all right. Of so come you are. see Escape to Margaritaville. But I'm also doing a show below. at 54 Below. Yeah, on the 29th of April. April 29th. Yeah, it's uh, Sinatra it? at yeah. the movies. Yeah, you do Sinatra so, stuff. Yeah, I love Frank Sinatra stuff. And so this concert is all uh, songs that he sang in movies. You've and done other Sinatra concerts. I have. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I did a I did a couple in L.A. and I've, I did a Christmas one here at 54 Below. And Leslie Kritzer is going to be with me, so it's oh, going to be I love her. an amazing night. So come check. Check that out. And that is the 29th April of 29th. April. Yeah. And then also Monday, you, you're Oh, yeah, I'm doing uh, Broadway Backwards. That's where people... It's not miscast. Yeah. That's where you sing things from things you wouldn't get cast in. This is when you sing it's, songs for the opposite gender. Yeah, it's really about gender swapping. Right. Yeah, and it's at the Hirschfeld, and I'm sure... I don't know what the website is, but... I'm sure there's tickets available, you but it's really fun. It. Yeah, uh, it's a really fun event. Yeah, it is. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. I'm gonna come on the 29th. I want to see please that. Please do. Please that, do. That sounds like a good time. Yeah. Okay, Mr. Matt Roden, will you please take us out? You guys know the deal. We do this live every single weekday at 5 p.m. here on Broadway.com's Facebook page, and it goes up on YouTube and all those other places. If you want another way to consume this show, we have a podcast. We release this as a podcast every single day after Live at 5, so if you're listening right now or you want to go listen, subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. That is all we got for you today. Thanks for another week. Great week of Live at 5. We will see you next week. It'll, it's April. It's April. It's about to be April. Happy Friday, everybody. Have a great weekend. Bye.